It is day 13. I realized immediately after I had published yesterday's video and podcast that I started yesterday saying, welcome to day 11, and it was day 12. So today I had to really make sure that it was definitely day 13, but it is. And today we're going to talk about a topic that is, ah, it's a tough one, uh, resentment. It's a real tough one because it's something that, it's a side effect of change that you don't really expect uh, and you don't expect it to come from the places that it comes from, especially if it's the first time you're doing something. So if we just take a super simple example, like the first time that you've, um, you know, quite radically altered your body and probably with that your mindset, because the two tend to go hand in hand. If you see someone who has had a radical physical transformation, they've lost a lot of weight or they've gotten a little bit bigger, it tends to go hand in hand that, you know, their mindset shifted for the better uh, at the same time, which is which is what's so fucking cool about it, to be honest. Um, but with that, you kind of forget in all of the momentum that you've built that not everybody else is feeling as great as you. And more often than not, it's the people who are closest to you who aren't changing. And let me explain that. So we are products of our environment and the sum of the people that we spend almost the most of our time with. As we've all heard many a time, you know, you are the sum of the five people you spend your time with, blah, blah, blah. But this stuff is true. And the chances are, unless all of you, and this is amazing by the way, but I'm, I'm yet to see it very often happen. Let's say you and your five mates, the chances are that you're not all in the same place at the same time. You're not all motivated. You're not all on the same fitness journey and mindset and self-development and all this sort of stuff. Maybe one or two of you are, but this sort of stuff can opt often fracture groups or it can cause someone complete to be completely alienated from a group because one person's doing it and the others aren't. But that same group and that same environment is also the same reason that you got yourself into the situation that you wanted to change, right? So, and I'm not saying your friends are going to be resentful of you, but it will surprise you where the resentment comes from. And it, it really surprises you that it comes in the first place, to be honest. I, um, you know, the number of times that I've worked with men and women in the past who, you know, after sort of six to eight weeks, particularly if they've been really on it, you know, they'll come to me and they'll say, I just can't believe it. My partner, who's like my best friend, they've become resentful. And it got to the point where I'd heard this five, 10 times, you know, a few years ago when I first started coaching, I was like, this is a common problem. Because at first I thought it was maybe just an isolated incident. Um, and I was like, holy shit, this is, this is pretty common. People are really going through this. And it's, it hurts. And it hurts more because it tends to come from the places you don't expect it. Partners, best friends, family, parents are terrible for this because they've seen you for the whole, for your whole of your life and they've gotten very comfortable with the sort of person that you identify as. For you to change, they will sit there and tell you that they are happy that you have changed and you have taken this new identity and this new confidence. But what also happens when you take on a new identity when you change radically physically and mentally is that you realize how much more you are capable of as a human being. And as soon as you do that, your confidence level goes from up to the moon. And the, the control dynamics or the dynamics of control in every single relationship shift. So whereas if you, the previous relationship you've had with your partner or with your parents or with your friends, without you even realizing or even intending, will change. Let's take a, a pretty good example I'm pretty sure everybody can relate to. Um, you get with your first girlfriend, boyfriend, you're 17, 18, whatever you might be, and then out of nowhere, one of you suddenly gets a lot hotter. Now, in that instance, it's probably not, or it might not be, because you've actively sought change. It's called puberty, right? <laughs> guys tend to develop much uh, later than girls. And like, let's say you've got a skinny 18 year old guy. He maybe starts going to the gym when he's 18, 19, 20. He, uh, he starts to eat a little bit more and suddenly he grows a bit. He, he grows an extra bloody couple of inches. He starts to get more a bit more attention. And the girl always had that sort of control over the relationship because hierarchically speaking, they were like hotter than the guy. And now what's happened is that guy has either come up to their level or surpassed them in a very uh, 
natural ranking order system, okay? And that alters the paradigm of the relationship. And it's very natural for the person who has been overtaken or outdone or surpassed to scrabble to get that control back. And that is what resentment is. Resentment appears as a control mechanism to try and gain something back from someone else. And often it's very subconscious. People don't even realize they are being resentful towards you. It comes in a very passive aggressive way. It's often to do with how you eat, what you eat, when you eat, how you look, whatever it might be. And it, and it comes in lots of different forms for guys and for girls, right? So for guys, I don't know, it might be like, oh, you're, you're so boring now. You only eat this, you, only, you don't drink this, or why do you never come out as much with us or whatever it might be. For girls, the stuff I've heard in the past is, oh my God, your body's changed so much. You have no shit, I look better. But girls will hear that and because of the tone, the tonality, which I think women are masters of communication when it comes to tonality and body language, much more so than men, it comes across in a way that they know is meant to be negative. It's meant to be a bit of a dig. It's meant to be a bit of a slag off, right? And they then think, shit, have I, have I done something wrong? What did I do to offend that person? No, you haven't done anything. This is them scrabbling for control, scrabbling to gain that, that sort of credibility and, and, and I guess attention as well. Because they feel like, shit, that person's changed and I haven't. Really, it's a, it's a defense mechanism, guys. And I'm telling you about it today just to make you aware of it. Just to make you the, aware that if you are experiencing it, it's normal. It's, it's this unfortunate side effect. But flip it on its head a little bit. Because if you are experiencing it, it actually means you're getting the result. It actually means it's working. And I arm you with that now today as we come to the middle of January. Because some of you who would have started off January flying will will about now be starting to feel, maybe not so much see, but feel the benefits of a healthier lifestyle. You'll be talking different, you'll be carrying yourself differently, you'll have a lot more mental clarity, you'll feel calmer, under stress, you'll feel like you can achieve much more, and what you've basically done is set your trajectory, right? And then you've got the other people who maybe had the intention, but for whatever reason, maybe they got ill at the start of January, or they were super busy with work or whatever it might be, it doesn't really matter. They just didn't quite get started and they're either behind you or they've just not even given it a thought, right? Just be aware when you're having conversations with these people that they may not be in the position as you. And I'm not saying to hold yourself back and to not be yourself and not be and, and to be inauthentic because that's the worst thing you can do. I, I pride myself on being as authentic as possible. I quite honestly, I don't have the energy to not be authentic these days. And just be aware though, just be aware that they might not be in the same place and then that's normal and that's fine. And it doesn't make you a worse person and it doesn't make them a worse person. You also need to be aware that their resentment, they probably aren't even aware that they are being resentful. However, one very powerful tool, another powerful tool that you get from this is that you now are seeing resentment clearly you are consciously aware of it. And that means you can control your own resentment. And with that, I encourage you to control your own envy. I'll give you a great example, right? I live in Spain, I live near the beach. I will often get comments from people, you know, I'll put a post up on Instagram or a story or whatever, I'll be walking down the beach to the gym and it, it's a very idyllic looking life. It's very aspirational. Of course, people don't know the, the lifestyle, the, the, you know, the day to day, they see a 10 second clip and they think I've got this perfect life, right? And they'll say a very off the cuff comment and it's, and it's not meant maliciously. I know this, it comes from family members sometimes. Oh, I'm so jealous or you're so lucky or I'm so envious. And you know, everyone's in their own situation. And if I get a comment like that, I'm, I, I'm so, I will say thank you because I actually think it's, it's a backhanded compliment, but I'll say thank you. Do you mind if I ask you a question? And they'll say, oh, what is it? Because everybody, if you ask anybody, can I, do you mind if I ask a question? They will never, ever say no. <laughs> so, good little sales tactic to do that. Do you mind if I ask you a question? What? Um, so if you say, do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, what? Why, why do you feel that way? And if you do feel that way, and if it's, if it's real, what are you doing about it? And you can do this. You can do this. If, if your body or your mindset has changed for the better, and you really know it is for the better, you know, you're getting in shape, 
you've given up booze for January, whatever, common one, right? You're eating a little bit healthier, you're going to the gym, you're just trying a little bit harder to be a better human, right? If you're doing that, and people are starting to make little backhanded comments around now, maybe it'll start next week. I'm, I'm hoping I'm doing this video now, so that when it does start towards the back end of the month, you're gonna be like, Doug told me this was coming. You just need to know that they're not in that position, but you can challenge it, but you can challenge it in a peaceful way. I've made the mistake so many times when I first started going through this of fighting it, like do, 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 and that doesn't get you anywhere, right? So it's not nice, you know, you want, you hope that your closest friends and family are going to celebrate your wins and your successes, and they will, I promise you they will. And the people who don't down the line, they, you can fuck them right off, right? Because they were never your mates anyway, okay? And this has happened to me, by the way, probably with like 50% of my friends. You know, I've radically changed my life at several stages throughout probably from, you know, 28 through to what I am now, the last eight years. And unfortunately in that time, for better or worse, and I'm not saying they're worse and I'm better, I've lost, I've lost friendships and it hurts. It hurts every single time. You, you really never think it's gonna come, but it does. But the people who are close to you, the people who mean best, they will see it eventually. And guess what? You get the opportunity to inspire them too. I hope that helps, guys. I'll leave it there. Uh, much love. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Blue Monday, mid-January. So we'll be talking a little bit about that and uh, that sort of checkpoint. All right, take care. Enjoy your Sunday. I'll see you soon.